Welcome fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic peeps to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, yeah, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon slime to horror movie slashers, but plenty of stuff in between, including books. Today's video, yep, it is another book-themed video, but it's not just any ordinary book-themed video. It's a Halloween-y, spooky season thematic book themed video because this will be my reading recommendations for Halloween time and for the Halloween weekend readathon. I am actually one of the co-hosts of Halloween weekend along with a whole bunch of other fantastic people. Halloween weekend was created by Lexi over at Books with Lexi. Check out her channel, she will be linked below. But I will actually tell you way more about all of this after the short intro. Maybe grab a snack, because I have a feeling this will be a long recommendation video. And without further ado, after the short intro, I will come right back and I will tell you guys all about the books that I recommend for freaking the best time of the year. Ooh. Welcome back guys! I'm so pumped! Okay, so there are a whole bunch of reading prompts. There are main reading prompts and bonus reading prompts for Halloween weekend. As I said, Halloween weekend was created by Books with Lexi. She has a very good brain for reading events and very talented at coming up with really creative events like Halloween weekend. So Halloween weekend will be taking place every weekend in October and it actually starts at the end of September, on September 28th. So every Thursday through Sunday, all throughout, starting on September 28th, all the way through Halloween. And it's gonna be great. All right, so, I'm going to go through a few recommendations for a few of the main reading prompts as well as a few of the bonus reading prompts, specifically one. All right, so there are some that I can't recommend you specific things for. One of the prompts say to read a book that scares you. I cannot tell you what scares you, only you can tell you what scares you. But I do want to concentrate in this recommendation video mainly on the two prompts. One is match a monster, where you spin a little wheel, and there are plenty of little cool, cute monster options, and whatever the wheel lands on, you've got to pick a book that matches that vibe. It's either going to match the vibe in terms of the cover is going to look like that type of monster, or maybe that monster is in the book you're going to choose. It's basically up to you. So it's a very loose interpretation of that one, but I will have tons of recs for my host favorite tropes because it says read a book with a host favorite trope. Each one of the co-hosts had to give three favorite tropes. So I'm going to tell you my recommendations for all three of my favorite tropes that I gave for this prompt. I will say that I'm sure the other co-hosts will have awesome recommendations for their favorite tropes and I highly recommend you guys check out all of their channels. So the other co-hosts, of course, like I said, Books with Lexi, the creator. Then we also have Katrina from Katrina Brown. We have Sav from Riveting Reads. And we also have Kaylee from Kaylee's Books. So make sure you check out and subscribe to each and every one of them because we are going to be having a ball and a freaking blast throughout October time. So join in for the party and let's dig into the recommendations. So first I'm going to go through books that I have read, then I'm going to recommend some books that I have not read but would fit different themes for different prompts. Alright, so let's start off with one of the main reading prompts which is to match a monster. One of the monsters on the wheel is a clown. I actually have a favorite trope that involves clowns, so I will wait and give you all my clown recommendations in a second when we talk about host favorite tropes because one of my favorite tropes was creepy clown slash carnival in the story. So hold your horses or, you know, hold your red noses if you like clown clown shenanigans. I just said shenanigans. <laughs> anyway, no, clown shenanigans. We will be getting to that in a second. Other monsters represented include skeleton, witch, werewolf, vampire, mummy, and ghost. So for werewolf, there's a great Stephen King book called Cycle of the Werewolf. It's very short. Also, some killer dogs or sinister dog books might work. That could remind you technically of 
a monster werewolf so you can use like a killer dog it reminds you of a werewolf so technically you're matching the monster the book hellhound by ken greenhall i love that book i think it's fantastic that would work there's also a book about werewolves it's a vintage book but there is a new version like a digital e-copy version it's called moonbane by al Antonio. werewolves coming from space technically so that one would be fun if you happen to get the witch prompt one of the most popular books going around booktube for the last couple of years is slew foot by brahm of course that's all about witches you could also read witches by royal doll so either of those would work if you land on mummy for your monster you could read a goosebumps book like the curse of the mummy's tomb i've actually read that one and i enjoyed that one it was short quick and fun like all goosebump reads usually are some goosebumps are better than others but i did enjoy the curse of the mummy's tomb specifically if you land on skeleton there are dozens upon dozens of books with skeletons on the cover especially if you look at old vintage horror or if you are a collector of vintage horror i know a lot of participants of hollow weekend are probably not vintage horror readers or collectors so there are a few newer books you could check out two of which are from one of my friends here on YouTube. His name is Cameron Chaney. He runs the channel Library Macabre and he's a fantastic author. So this book's been out a while. It's called Autumn Crow. It's a collection of stories, but all the stories connect together and they all take place in the town of Autumn Crow where it is Halloween 24 seven, 365. So this would be so appropriate for the vibes and feel of October, but also there is a lovely, creepy-ass skeleton on the cover with a jolly old pumpkin. Creepy, jolly, whatevs, you know, whatever you want to call this pumpkin. But what's exciting is that Cameron just released another book called Autumn Crow High, Fresh Hell, and that also has a skeleton on the cover. I have not received my copy yet, but it's coming very soon, and I'm so pumped to get to it. I will probably be adding it to my TBR, which is a spoiler to my TBR, but I had to tell you guys about it, so I'm so stoked to get to that one. It would definitely fit if you happen to land on skeleton when you spin the Matcha Monster wheel. If you get Ghost, you could technically probably read a Haunted House book because, you know, haunted houses associated with ghosts. It would work in terms of a book about a haunted house reminding you of a ghost. But if you want to get very specific, I do think yet another Goosebumps book would work here. The Ghost Next Door. I love this book. I thought it was so good. I really enjoyed it. It was definitely a different vibe in terms of the ending vibe to this and it surprised me but in a good positive way so yeah this one would be good if you got ghost another one that would be fun would be ghost train by stephen laws that is a vintage book and it's a lot of fun although i know not everyone is into vintage reads as i've already said but there is a new edition of this on kindle so you do have the option of reading the kindle version and also there is an audiobook as well Next up is Vampire, and I've got a few suggestions for this. I'm not going to go through each and every premise of all of these books for all of my suggestions, especially because I've got so many, it would take forever. But if you see anything you like, feel free to Google it or look it up on Goodreads or Storygraph and learn more. Nightblood, I will say that I gave that a 4.5 star, both myself and my other... Hello Weekend co-host Katrina loved the book. It's a vintage book, but it's released in a new paperbacks from hell edition from Valancourt Books. So Nightblood, great fun vampire novel. It's like on the back of the book, they describe it like Rambo, but with vampires. So it's kind of like that. And I really love it. If you like Buffy, this would be a fun book for you in every generation. It's a new story in the Buffy universe, but it features a lot of the old characters from the show. And it's very much in the vein and style of the show. So if you love Buffy, the vampire slayer, the series, you will probably like the book because I think the humor, the style, it's very faithful to the show. And another one, Big Bad, which is another Buffy book set in the Buffy verse. I didn't like it as much as in every generation. In every generation, I gave a five star. Big Bad, I gave a four star, but it's still a lot of fun. And it features mainly Buffy as your main character in Big Bad. But uh, in every generation, there's plenty of other characters besides Buffy. So you get a lot of the side characters in every generation. Okay, so those were all of my Match a Monster recommendations. I know I didn't have too many. I really want to concentrate more on suggestions for my favorite tropes. And that's why I didn't, you know, go too heavily on suggesting things for the Match a Monster prompt. But I gave you a few in case you're stuck on uh, some books here and there. 
All right, so let's go over my personal favorite tropes. All of the hosts have three favorite tropes each. I'm just gonna give you recs for mine because I don't really know a lot of recs for the other people's favorite tropes. So I just thought I might as well concentrate on mine. My three favorites are one, a book set in the 80s or 90s, and that could be a newer released book, but it's set back in the day, back in the 80s or 90s. So it doesn't have to be a vintage book. We're talking about a book published in any year, but is set back in the day in the 80s or 90s. Another one of my favorite tropes is a book with a Halloween or fall setting or with Halloween or fall vibes. Easy. I have freaking over like 20 book recs for that, some of which I have read, some of which I have not read. And last but not least, I already referenced this. I love a good creepy carnival or a clown story. So my third favorite trope is a book that features a creepy carnival or clowns. First, let's start off with set in the 80s or 90s. I've got a big old stack. Okay, first up, we've got Mina and the Undead. This is by Amy McCaw. She runs a fantastic YouTube channel. So not only is she an author, but she's around on BookTube. So I would check out her channel if you haven't already. And her books are fantastic. So Mina is going to be a trilogy of books. Right now, two of the three books are out. So the first one definitely takes place in the 90s and you definitely get 90s vibes from this and it's awesome. It actually takes place in my hometown of New Orleans, baby! So it's kind of cool. She did a great job, Amy of course, did a great job at really capturing the vibe of New Orleans as a city in the 90s, which is very hard to do considering Spoiler, not really a spoiler, but anyway, she's from England, so there you go. So not only could you read Mina and the Undead for your set in the 80s or 90s, you could also read the sequel, which is also set in the 90s. So not only is this set in the 90s, but it hits another one of my favorite tropes. It's set during Halloween time. So if you've already read the first book and you're looking for something that hits not only one trope of mine, but another favorite trope of mine, it would be Mina and the Slayers. Here we have Scan Lines by Todd Kessling. I gave this a five star rating when I read it back in April. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Look up trigger warnings. It is very powerful. I have to cover the cover because it could be triggering for some people. Definitely look up triggers because I think if you have any kind of sensitivity to talks of suicide, there is that in this book. But it is very powerful and it is set back in the day. There's even some old technology that is referenced. So I did very much enjoy this book, even though it was a hard read. If you've got some time on your hands and you don't feel too intimidated by picking up a more chunky book, I would suggest Mall Rats by Ivy Tholen. This one set in the 90s. And a lot of it takes place at a shopping mall and there's a slasher on the loose and this girl, she's staying with her cousin and aunt and uncle and she's got to find out what's going on and she's obsessed with horror movies. Lots of cool elements in here and come on, look at this cover. If you were looking to match the skeleton, if you spun the skeleton on the match the monster wheel, this could fit for that too. You could pick this and it would work for a skeleton. But if you're looking for, instead of that, if you're looking for my favorite trope, set in the 90s, heck yes, this would work. Here we have one of my favorite reads from this year. I highly recommend this one. I love this book so much. It had such weird, such strange vibes. Set, I believe, in the 90s. It's Head Like a Hole by Andrew Van Way. And I read this for my friend Amy's book club. You could find her at Amy Noel Reads. Check out her channel. I will link her below. And I'm so glad she picked this for her book club because this was an easy five stars. Essentially, it takes place during the mid-90s. And you've got this group of friends who they've gone off and separated, gone up their own separate ways, but each of them keep remembering and having strange experiences from back in their early college days. So like, what's going on? What are we forgetting? Is there something we're not remembering? And they have to kind of get together and figure out why they're having these strange experiences, what's going on. There is something that's found in the ocean that comes into play throughout the story. Look at this cover. Come on. It's fantastic. I gotta, I gotta give this my highest praise and my highest recommendation. So trust me, I would think that most people would like it, but uh, I do recall from Amy's book club that a lot of people gave this a really decent rating, mostly 3.5 and above, if not four stars and above. I definitely was on the higher side, but uh, I definitely feel confident that this would be a pretty enjoyable read for the most part for almost anyone. But uh, yeah, it was extra enjoyable for me and that is why I am recommending it for one of my favorite tropes set in the 80s or 90s. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. 
sometimes Caesar is really good at writing vintage style horror books and Video Night is one of those books. So this book has 80s vibes to the max. I love it. It's so good. It's kind of like an alien creature feature type of story. This group of friends just hanging around watching old movies and they have to deal with like an alien invasion type of scenario. Crazy body horror, really entertaining. Not the most likable characters, but still an entertaining story. And I very much enjoyed this back when I read this a couple of years ago. Okay, next up, you cannot go wrong with Grady Hendrix. Here I have two books by Grady Hendrix, and I actually saw on the Halloween Discord that a lot of people are planning to buddy read different Grady Hendrix books together. And these books, both of them or either of them would work for my favorite trope set in the 80s or 90s. My Best Friend's Exorcism set in the 80s. The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, set in the 90s. Both would work. So this one's about vampires. This one is about, like, possession, but also about friendship and so much more. I love both of these and gave them both five stars. So Grady Hendrix, he's so great at writing horror, but approachable horror that is really good for even non-horror fans. And he also writes comedy in his horror very well and he also writes great female characters and he also writes really wonderful female relationships in his books in my opinion so you can't go wrong i would suggest these two from grady hendrix if you're looking to fill one of my specific favorite tropes now for a few books set in the 80s or 90s that I have not yet read, but I wanted to mention in case you're looking for more suggestions. First up, The 86 Fix. This is by Keith A. Pearson, and I have not read it, but I've been wanting to read it. It's mostly about time travel. We do spend some time in 1986. We follow the main character as he grows up and then I think he goes back in time over 30 years will he be able to fix his life so I love the old school tape on the cover awesome if you don't mind collections of stories here we have a 90s based collection of horror stories it says ah that's what I call horror an anthology of 90s horror and this is just fantastic it's edited by Chelsea Pumpkins you could find her on Instagram, by the way. Look at this great cover. Next up, this just oozes Stranger Things vibes. This is Strong Bones. And it says, it's 1989 and the evil's on the loose in the Smoky Mountains. So, I definitely want to get to this, but beware, it is quite chunky. Here's another book that's set in the past. Part of it takes place in 1977, but then it also goes forward in time into the 1990s. So this is Meddling Kids. I have not read it yet, but I have heard mixed things. However, it definitely gives off Scooby-Doo vibes, so it might be perfect for Halloween time. So if you're willing to take a chance because not everyone has loved this, but still see if you like it, then go ahead and check it out. It might be for you. Another book set in the 90s would be Dead Flip, and this one looks so good. I've had it on my radar for quite a while. I just have not gotten to it, so I just wanted to put it on your radar. And if you don't like horror, another awesome book that I read that's definitely set in the past, I can't remember if it's the 80s or 90s, but it's definitely set in one of the two, and it's called We Ride Upon Sticks. It is more of a literary fiction book, so essentially it's like a girl coming of age story about this field hockey team of girls, and they're just trying to deal with growing up, and they think that this pact that they make kind of allows them to keep winning so they think that they're like using all this witchy evil power but is it really any kind of power or is it really just like their inner strength that they're using within themselves and it's just like we're following them on their journey as they're growing up like in this last year I think it's of high school but anyway I loved it I thought it was so enjoyable but I think it would be best suited for people who like more literary leaning fiction versus like horror or other kinds of books. If you don't mind like a slow burn, a character study, that's the type of read it is. My second favorite trope that I want to go over is a Halloween or fall setting or Halloween and fall vibes. So first I do want to say I'm really excited to recommend this Mayfly. Not everyone has loved this, but I loved it. I gave it a five star. It's probably my favorite read of the year. The only way you'd like this is if you don't mind a book where you're in the character's head the entire time. You're getting to know the character. There's not action every single page of the book, but there is Halloween-y references and Halloween vibes all throughout the book. So our main character, Maeve, she loves Halloween time. She's also a Disney princess, even though they never say the word Disney outright. You do get the gist that she's basically a Disney princess. So this was so good. There are some extreme moments towards the end of the book that might not be for everybody. So look up trigger warnings if you are concerned. 
I just had such a good time with this. Maeve talked about different Halloween songs. She talked about Halloween decorations. It was just freaking fantastic. And uh, I had a good time being in her head, even though she's super messed up. Think American Psycho, the book. I've never read the book, but I have seen the movie. Think that concept, but with a woman, and also a little bit less boring, apparently. Uh, I didn't think the movie was boring, but apparently the book's a little boring. A lot of people who've read both Mayfly and American Psycho said that Mayfly was a little bit more entertaining for them, so keep that in mind. But yeah, if you kind of think of a similar tone, it's got a similar tone and a similar premise, but it definitely does its own thing, and definitely Maeve is very unique, and I just enjoyed kind of going along for the ride with her. When you're talking about books set in fall or books with fall vibes, you cannot not mention Ray Bradbury. So I know a few people who recently read Something Wicked This Way Comes and they didn't like it because of the fancy language. So I will warn you, if you do not like fancy writing, over the top poetic language, you probably won't like this. However, I loved it. The audiobook does help absorb some of the fancy kind of classic language in here. Uh, I would say it's more poetic than anything else. It's very, very poetic, and sometimes it makes it hard to read, and it makes it a little bit less approachable, but I still had a great time with this, and it's still super thematic. Here is one of his middle grade books, The Halloween Tree. This also has some fancy language, but it's a little bit more approachable because it's made for younger audiences. I love this. The Halloween imagery is out of this world. We're following a group of kids as they meet this mysterious character on Halloween night, and part of the adventure that they have on Halloween night is trying to figure out what is happening with one of their friends. And they're trying to see if they could help save him because he seems to be in danger and they don't know what's going on. Here we have Harvest Home, and this is a great slow burn, lots of fall vibes. If you don't mind a super, super slow burn with a heavy character leaning focus, and if you don't mind waiting a while for some of the creepiness to kick in, then you might like this. This was fantastic, super atmospheric, and just very, very fall-centric. And I loved it, but it wouldn't be for everybody. It is more of a classic, and there are some annoying aspects to the main character, who's this dude who moves to this small town with his family. He's kind of unlikable at times. However, the story is super entertaining in my opinion, but I know it won't be for everybody, but uh, if you're interested, take a chance. If you're looking for something short, quick, and sweet, here we have The Last Night of October by Greg Chapman. This one is a little sad, a little morose. It's more serious of a story. There are Halloween vibes because it does take place on Halloween, but again, it's more serious. It's not as fun. It's not as light as some other stories might be, but I still say it's a good read. This book is not a perfect book, but I want to mention it because it has insane Halloween vibes. However, it's a little too repetitive and a little too long. This was When Halloween Was Green, a novel by Bernard K. Finnegan. And this has so many Irish vibes as well, where they talk a lot about Irish lore and tying that into the history of Halloween. It's fantastic. Like I said, the big cons of this book, the length, and the repetitiveness. Other than that though, there are some great vibes in here. So if you're willing to take a chance, then I would say perhaps pick it up. Next up a book that many people have already read, but I do want to mention it because I just read it last year and really enjoyed it. This is Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. I had such a good time with this. It's kind of like a haunted house story. All of these horror writers, they go to this kind of notorious house to kind of meet and have a live stream and more develops after that. So it doesn't just take place on Halloween. At first, when I first picked this up, I thought the whole thing took place on Halloween. It does not. However, part of the story, a decent chunk, takes place on Halloween. So if you're looking for Halloween vibes, this has a few Halloween vibes, but overall the story is great in general, in my opinion, and that's why you should pick it up. This book is very similar to Autumn Crow in concept. This is Greetings from Moon Hill by Anthony J. Rapino, a collection of stories, but all the stories tie together because they're all set in this town of Moon Hill, and it's like Halloween 24-7, 365 in Moon Hill, much like in Autumn Crow, which I was describing earlier, the town of Autumn Crow in the book Autumn Crow, it's Halloween all the time. This is similar to that in concept, but it does its own thing. It's really awesome, really well written. I love this. I just read this last year, I believe, and I had such a good time with it. Definitely has fall vibes, and I just can't recommend it enough. If you're looking for something that's a little bit lesser known of a collection, I would say this is 
this is one that deserves more attention. When we're talking about Halloween-y books, we gotta mention some Goosebumps here. All right, so first up, Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns. Not the best Goosebumps book, but look at the cover. You can't deny that, yeah, it's gonna have fall vibes. Look at these trick-or-treaters with freaking pumpkin heads. And yeah, it does take place on Halloween, so that's where the Halloween and fall vibes comes in. And it was a good time. Not the best, like I said, but I still am glad I read it. Here, I just wanted to show off two of my foreign editions of The Haunted Mask, which is one of the most Halloween-y Goosebumps books because it does take place on Halloween. Thank you so much to my two friends who actually gifted me these copies of the different editions of Goosebumps, The Haunted Mask. Thank you so much. I love these so much. They're on my desk all the time. I uh, have a little display for them. I treasure these. But yeah, of course, you would pick up the American edition if you were to read this during Halloween time. I highly recommend it. One of my favorite Goosebumps books of all time. Here's another middle grade book, much like the Goosebumps series or middle grade. This is a middle grade book. This is The Time Watchers by Robbie Miles. It takes place on Halloween and has so many Halloween-y vibes. It is more younger geared, like, you know, if you either have a child at heart within yourself or you have an actual child at home, then you might actually enjoy this. Uh, but the Halloween vibes and the fall vibes are definitely there, and I had a really good time reading this because I am very familiar with my inner child. I'm always like, yo, inner child, come out and play, because I'm always like, you know, up for revisiting childlike innocence and always revisiting things I loved back in the day as a child and also books that kind of revisit that time and middle grade books in general. I, I love that type of thing and it keeps me in touch with like, you know, my nostalgic self. Here we have a book I'm going to recommend by my favorite author, Robert McCammon. This is Usher's Passing. It has a great audiobook. This is not my favorite book by Robert McCammon, although I did tab the hell out of it. But anyway, look at this fantastic cover with this jack-o'-lantern face on it. Yes, yes. Essentially, we are following this family and they're kind of rich snobs, but something more is going on with this family and with their crazy kind of creepy house. And I don't wanna give away too much, but I know my friend Katrina really, really enjoyed this book and so did my friend Andrew. You can find Katrina again at Katrina Brown and Andrew over the channel, it came from the page. We all liked it. My friend Amy didn't like it as much as us, but for the most part, a lot of people I know enjoyed this, and it definitely has fall vibes for sure, and I love the audiobook, like, a lot. Alright, now I'm going to discuss some books set around Halloween or fall that I have not read. Starting with my book club pick. I'm going to have more than one book club pick, but my main one is this one, and it definitely has Halloween vibes. It's called Apartment 5 is Alive, and if you want to join in, I have got a free and open to the public Discord for my book club. We are called the Midnight Book Society, of course, based off of the show are you for the dark because there is the midnight society we are the midnight book society so join in if you want to read that book it is on ku and there is an audiobook and that is my number one official book club read there will be a space for discussion on discord but there probably won't be a live show but join in if you want it's kind of about this apartment that throughout the decades it seems to keep changing the inner situation like the inner decoration to be Halloween-y. But it's sinister as well, apparently. I don't know. I don't know too much about it, but I don't need to know too much about it. I'm excited to get to it. I haven't heard much about it. So I'm going to find out if I will like it for myself. And I hope you will join me. Quickly, some books that I own that I have not gotten to, but definitely take place around Halloween or fall. We've got Before Halloween by Killian H. Gore, I think it is. Ghosts, aliens, lake monsters, serial killers, sharks, and a cameo by Jesus Christ. Welcome to my world. Welcome to Before Halloween. It's 13 short stories. Here we have, I think it's another collection. This is a haunted Halloween. And I'm sorry if you could hear the air conditioner. It is hot as hell in here. I even raised it up so that it wouldn't kick on, but it's still kicked on. Look at this awesome cover, but I have not read it, so I can't attest to if it's good or not, but just wanted to make you aware of this is Halloween-y and it would fit for my favorite trope. Here we have a, another book by Ray Bradbury. This is a collection of stories. This is the October Country. Here we have an extreme horror book. This is All Hallows Dead. And I know my friend Katrina, again, she's a co-host of Hollow Weekend. I think she gave it like a 2.5, so she didn't love it, but I know other people who, who have liked it. But yeah, kind of be a little leery, I guess. I don't know if everyone's gonna like it. I don't even know if I'm gonna like it, but it definitely seems like it would be fun and Halloween-y. It would definitely fit my favorite trope, at least. That's for sure. Here we have Ten Tales of Terror. This is Halloween by James A. Moore. 
Here we have Halloween Land by Kevin J. Kennedy. Here we have The Witch of Halloween House. Here we have a collection of stories from Ronald Kelly, The Halloween Store, and other tales of All Hallows' Eve. Look at this fantastic cover. Very, very cool. Here we have The Magic Hour. And this sounds like a really sweet story. Essentially, something happens to one of these two twins, and the other twin, the one that's left surviving, wants to see his passed away twin again. And so he can see him during the magic hour. And it just sounds really sad, but it also sounds very thematic and very Halloween-y, because of course, Halloween, part of it is celebrating, you know, the passage from life to death, you know, fall time. It's the passage from summer to winter, so the passage from kind of blooming life into the dead of winter, you know? So I think this will represent that perfectly. And they're freaking doing yard work outside, you bastards! I'm so sorry. It's annoying. I hope you cannot hear it, but they've been doing this all day and... Ugh. Here we have another collection of stories. This is Halloween Season by Lucy A. Snyder. I think this one's gonna be a really fun read. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, lots of collections for Halloween time. There are tons of collections. Uh, I don't know if everyone's into short story collections, but if you are, there's a freaking gold mine of potential Halloween themed short story collections that are out there just waiting to be discovered for you. All right, last but not least, let's take a trip to the carnival. Do, 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 forget it, forget it. I'm terrible at singing or doing the carnival theme, but I am excited to talk about some clown themed and carnival themed books, because yeah, that's one of my favorite tropes, as I said, and I just love clown books and anything set at a carnival. I have a few that I've read and there's quite a few carnival books out there that I have not read, but let's talk about a few I have read. So here we have Clown in a Cornfield. There is this book and there is the sequel. I enjoyed this book. It wasn't my favorite, but it definitely would fit for a clown in the story. And it's more of a slasher book. It kind of has, you know, late summer, early fall vibes, but it's a good time. Next we have a clown book, and this is a really gross, 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 creepy clown book. This is Clown Flesh by Tim Curran, so if you don't like gross out horror type of situations, I would not check this out. This is very gory, also very smelly, because there's a lot of weird smells in this book. But the clowns, these are like for sure creepy clowns, so if you're also scared of like the creepy version of clowns, I would not check this out either. <laughs> but if you do like any of that stuff, if you do like creepy clowns, or if you like a lot of gore, you might enjoy this. I know I liked it. It is set in winter, so not really fall-centric, but definitely creepy clowns. Here's a book I just freaking read, like, last week and loved it. This was a five-star read. Probably my favorite read of the month of September, which is the month I read this in. So this is Cotton Candy Massacre. Oh, it was so good. Five stars. So we have a carnival. We have this group of teenagers going to the carnival. One of them is trying to get like his girlfriend back. She's trying to get over him. So a lot of stuff happens, but there's this gross freaking cotton candy that ends up like doing stuff to people who eat it. Like it ends up kind of changing them somehow. I'm not going to say too much. So yes, it was so good. If you like great gore, if you like interesting story and just a fun time, it felt like I was reading a movie, if that makes sense. So it's like I was freaking, instead of watching a movie, I was reading a movie. That's how it felt. And it was freaking fantastic. Also part toots is out. That's what it's called. Toots, not too, anyway. <laughs> There's also a prequel as well, a very short prequel. I actually might read the prequel during October, so we will see. We will see. But I cannot recommend this highly enough. Like, it's so good. It's so good. Another book I just read, this is The Pilo Family Circus. Definitely has a creepy clown in here. In fact, it's got almost like a split personality, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type of scenario going down. So this guy, Jamie, when he puts on the face paint, he becomes like a different person. He kind of becomes a menace at this carnival that he's at. And when he ha doesn't have the face paint on, he's kind of like a normal guy and he wants to leave this crazy circus but he's kind of trapped there when he ends up having the paint on and for other reasons too. This was so bizarre and weird, but that's why I liked it. I gave this a 4.5 star, really, really enjoyed it. So I do recommend it if you're looking for a good clown themed read and you like those types of reads and you don't mind weird type of stories, then you might enjoy this. Lots of cursing, just be warned about that. And also I would be kind of wary, look up triggers if you're worried at all, because I would say that for all of these books, just in case you're worried about anything, look it up.
when in doubt look it up that's the motto you should live by when it you know comes to triggers because I don't really have any so like me recommending all of these doesn't mean that you will necessarily get on with the recommendation but I sure did love this one all right you knew it was gonna happen I had to mention taste like candy I couldn't basically fail all of your expectations I had to live up to the expectations you knew in your head if you've been watching me for any length of time you know that I would mention this book it takes place at a Halloween carnival it kind of takes place more late summer than fall but it would fit with the carnival trope because as I said there is a Halloween themed carnival in this and there are amazing carnival themed kills in this it's a slasher book some of it it's most Mostly following these characters at the beginning the slashing doesn't take place till we're over halfway in but it's worth the wait and I really love the characters and getting to know the characters helped when you got to the slash and you didn't want the characters to die also it had some humor freaking awesome book can't recommend it enough I know I say that a lot this is also by Ivy Tholen I mentioned mall rats by her if you were gonna choose one over the other I would choose this one it's a little bit shorter and I just like this one the most I gave this one a flat-out five stars so enjoyable great slasher book Probably one of my favorite slasher books of all time. Another great carnival themed book that is actually a middle grade book and it takes place around Halloween time would be Carnival. It's part of the Monster Street series by J.H. Reynolds. So good, so cute. I love those books. There's also one that's set in Halloween called The Halloweeners. So that would be good for that trope of set around fall or Halloween time. This Carnival, that one would be good for either set around Halloween or taking place at a carnival because it's got both elements in it. Next, there is The Grin in the Dark. That's another middle grade story, and it's actually quite creepy for being a middle grade book, of course. It's not geared towards adults, so most adults could handle it for sure, unless you don't like clowns, because there is a very creepy clown in it, and you could see by the cover that it's very intimidating in terms of the cover. It's very creepy. And here we have my last clown-themed suggestion. We've got Clowns vs. Spiders. I talk about this book a lot. Sorry. I'm gonna talk about it again. This is by Jeff Strand. It's a great, fun clown book, but it's about nice clowns and these clowns they don't want to be scary clowns but unfortunately because of their job situation they do have to get a job at like a haunted house as scary clowns and they're appalled that they have to be scary clowns it goes against everything they believe in it goes against their clown code that they try to adhere to in their lives then meanwhile all of these big ass spiders get unleashed from this cave from an explosion and the spiders come approaching the haunted house and the clowns have to go up and face these spiders. So the, the title is very, very representative of what the story is actually about. You do get clowns versus spiders. And it's so much fun and so funny. If you do like horror comedy and you don't take, you know, everything in your books very seriously, if that's okay with you sometimes, I would definitely give this a chance because it is so much fun. I had a blast with this book. And last but not least, because I want to preach to the world how fantastic this book is, Nelfs. So, Nelfs by Sydney Williams, there is a bonus prompt that says something spooky or creepy on the cover. I think you could read Nelfs because there is something creepy on the cover. Look at this creepy shadow, fog coming out of the TV. So there are these TV characters called Nelfs, think of Smurfs, and they start coming to life and bothering this little cute little girl named Heaven. And not only are they harassing Heaven, but they're also bashing Heaven's mom to Heaven. They're like, yo, Heaven, your mom's a bitch. Your mom's a whore. So just like Taste Like Candy and Clowns vs. Spiders, I have freaking talked about this book so much this year. However, I couldn't ignore another opportunity to talk about it because there is a newer edition of this book coming out with actually this vintage cover. How amazing is that? Super big props to the publishing company for getting the rights to the old cover and going to republish it with the old cover. That's incredible. But you could also get the audiobook version, which I really enjoyed. I used audio and also used an e-copy, so you can get it on e-copy as well. So I would say if you're up for a zany, crazy, wild, wacky, good time, you cannot go wrong with Nelfs by Sydney Williams. And yeah, that definitely has something creepy on the cover and it's a lot of fun. And uh, everyone I've recommended it to has liked it and thought it was a good time. So I'm here recommending it to you guys in case you're looking for something really, 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 really just off the wall, bonkers, and just a good time. Okay guys, oh, whoo, that's it. That was all of my recommendations. I know it was a lot to absorb. It was a lot for me to go through. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't too boring or repetitive because I have talked about some of these books before, including in my 
recommendation video for Halloween books last year. However, there were a few things I didn't talk about, and I just wanted to re-mention some of the ones I had already talked about in case people hadn't seen that video. So now you've got the up-to-date recommendation list for all of your Hollow Weekend needs. So if you are joining in with Hollow Weekend with us, let me know down in the comments below what are you most looking forward to. Make sure you are subscribed to all of the co-hosts and Lexi, and also make sure you are joined to the Discord. I will link the Discord below, and I will also link the Instagram below. So check it out, all the deets are below. And by the way, this little printable I held up, it is available on the Discord as well, under the Graphics tab. So there are like Instagram little documents you can use to post your reads, but there's also a printable for people who like to print things out and write on things or paste things in their journal, etc, etc. So we've got options for you, no matter what you want to do. All right, well, that's all of the business that we had to take care of. Let's go. It's time to freaking go into spooky season. Woo! All right, guys, for this time, that's it for me. Till next time, you guys know what you can do. Keep on killing it. Bye, guys.